All right, in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to create a complete idea, a musical idea like this one. Um, through the use of Simpler, Operator, and the drum rack inside of Ableton Live. And this video is going to move rather quickly, so I'm not going to stop and explain everything along the way, but it's supposed to just give you a rough idea of how you can use some of the things that we've talked about in other videos to start to create a track, specifically focusing on the use of simpler operator and drum rack with the inclusion of MIDI effects to start generating music. So, hope you enjoy it and hope you get something out of it. Alright, so I'm going to start with building up a sound to begin with. Let's go to the browser. We'll grab a simpler instrument, drag and drop it onto our track, delete out the rest of the stuff that I don't need. And then let's go find a sound. This could be any sound. That's kind of interesting, actually. Let's see if we can do something with that. Drag and drop it into the simpler, get rid of my browser, open it up. Been going. release on there. Now we just need to tune it. Audio effects, tuner. So I'm playing in a C, but I'm getting in a getting out like a B flat quarter tone sharp. So let's go transposition. There's my C and detune it down just a little bit. Perfect. Now we've got it tuned. Let's save that as a preset. Save as um, wood knock. Sure. Cool. Now let's get some uh, MIDI effects going here. Let's start with a chord object. Like that. 
That's really nice. Let's go with that. And let's make sure it's all in a scale. Let's go C minor. Cool, then let's get something recorded. Let's go with 110 as my beats per minute. Check that out. Something like that, then let's record this in. Make sure I've got a count in, one bar, very good. Two, three, four. Turn off the metronome, do some quantizing here. Zoom in a little bit, command U. Listen to it, make sure that oh, it's a little bit off, let's stress it over. Maybe I only need to leave those two bars. Cool, now we need a kick drum, so let's go get our instruments. I'm gonna use the operator, drag and drop it onto a track. Let's put that inside of a drum rack, control click on a title bar, group to drum rack. Go to the, the rack section, the inputs and the outputs, and then set that to play out a C1 instead. And some pitch enveloping. Sustain or release. Let me try dropping it down the octave. I like that. Let's get something written in for that. Maybe just four on the floor. Great. Let's design a snare. Maybe a hi hat instead. We name this one as kick. We name this one as hi hat. Hi-hat should be all white noise and very short. And then let's use a high-pass filter to pull out some of the low frequencies. Cool. And let's just option drag this one, call it that first one kick. This way, it's the next one plus hi-hat. Get that one playing. Well, let's go grab a MIDI effect and let's grab the velocity one, drag and drop it onto the hi-hat rack so it's before the operator that I'm using to make my hi-hat. And then let's just randomize the velocity that's coming into it. But we won't hear any results because we haven't set up our operator that's producing the hi-hat sound to have its oscillator A's volume envelope or amplitude envelope be sensitive to velocity and that's that bell right there. So now Let's add a little bit of sensitivity to the frequency of the filter from velocity. We bring down the volume of the hi-hat inside of that drum rack just a little bit. Cool, and let's do one more where we add in a snare plus snare. Go back to our instruments, grab the operator. Uh, maybe for this one we use a simple uh, sample. So let's search our samples for a snare. Actually like whatever that one is. Maybe let's transpose that sample just a little bit. filter out some of that low end.
There. Cool. Now we just need the melody. Let's go back to our browser, grab an instrument, the operator, drag and drop it onto a new track, and then let's copy and paste over that same MIDI clip that we used on that original simpler instrument. And let's also grab those same chord and scale effects. So I'm just holding Option, dragging those onto the track. And then let's bring in a arpeggiator. More MIDI effects, arpeggiator. Let's go 16th notes as our rate and random other. And then let's slow this out just to hear what it's sounding like currently. this up shift command shift and then up or down arrows will jump up or down octaves okay, let's stretch this out to 100 percent now all we have to do is go over to our operator switch it from being six voices to monophonic and then turn on the glide So now I've got the start of a track that I can then start either finding out more variations upon this or start moving it over into the arrangement view to turn something into it or make something out of it. So the keys um, to success for this track have been on both of these um, pitch oriented instruments. First that when I designed this simpler instrument I made sure that the note that I was sending into it was actually the note that I was getting out of it remembering that the pitch that this creates is actually dependent upon the uh, loop size or the duration of the sample to actually have looping and how many times per second that loops. Um, so it's not always guaranteed that that's going to be exactly the note that I'm sending in. And the second uh, secret to the success here is that I'm using these scale MIDI effects to make sure that whatever MIDI data I've either recorded in or manipulated using other MIDI effects, whatever MIDI notes are re being received by that uh, mm -hmm. instrument, are only or all in the same scale, which is what allows both of these, um, the wood knock simpler and that lead monophonic operator track, let's actually rename that, to uh, sound good together. And then also um, further solidifying that by using the same chords built off of the same exact MIDI um, MIDI clips. So the last step that I might do is I might actually go in and resample these, excuse me, resample the uh, random MIDI events that I've generated with, uh, uh, with my lead track here so that I can actually have a repeating lead rather than a randomly generated lead. So to do that, I'm going to set up a new MIDI track. If I can't already see its inputs and its outputs, I'm going to expose those using this toggle over here. I'm going to set up this new MIDI track to listen to my lead track. As its input. I'm going to record enable it, click record, and all I have to do is pick my favorite section, maybe this second grouping of four bars here, copy that over, call it my main lead or main melody, go back to that lead track, turn off all of its MIDI effects, and when I play that back, I'll 
I'll get the same repeating melody over and over again rather than a randomly generated one. So this track will maintain some of its identity. So anyways, hope this helps you guys get started.